to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Ezekiel 43 through 45. Don't neglect the reading. I'm going to give you some YouTube videos that I want you to watch along with this. The uh, Ezekiel Temple Vision, chapter 42 and 43. I'll put the link down below or on the screen. 3D animation. It's 3 minutes and 28 seconds long. Use this as you're doing the reading, but don't neglect the reading. Pause the video as you're coming along to those particular verses, and it'll all come together and make sense. Again, one cubit is 18 inches if your Bible reads in cubits. And so two cubits is three feet or so. Man brought me back to the eastern gate. Suddenly the glory of the Lord of Israel appeared from the east. I fell down face down. And in verse 4, the glory of the Lord came into the temple through the east gate. The Spirit took Ezekiel into the inner courtyard where the glory of God had already filled the temple. Okay, um, This is an important visual because God had left the temple to the east at the beginning of this exile period early on when we were talking about in uh, Ezekiel because of disobedience and idolatry. But by this time, or in this reading... Jerusalem had been cleansed. Okay, that's why the temple had been rebuilt in this vision. Verse 7, the Lord says, uh, Son of man, this is my throne. This is the place where I will rest my feet. And in 10, Son of man, describe to the people of Israel the temple and all that I've shown you so that they will be ashamed of their sins. Tell them all the details, he's essentially saying. And in verse 11, he says, write this down. And we've seen in in Jeremiah, in Isaiah, Moses, Paul. This is why we have the Bible, because God was clear about this. Write it down. Good stuff. Verses 13 through 27 describes the dimensions of the altar, which you can see here in this um, picture here, in the middle of the inner courtyard, the horns on each of the corners. It was 21 feet by 21 feet. Uh, it had steps on the east side of it, and the burnt offerings were there. In verse 26, it says, Seven days it took it to cleanse and to make atonement for the altar. If I have Ezekiel 45, the man took Ezekiel back to the eastern gate, but it was closed. And the Lord said to me, This gate must remain closed. It will never again be open. I, uh, no one will ever open it and pass through it, for the Lord uh, has entered here. And the man brought Ezekiel to the northern gate. Ezekiel saw the glory of the Lord had filled the temple. He fell face down to the ground. The Lord says, hey, use your eyes and ears concerning this, the Lord's temple. The people of Israel had defiled the temple. And in verse 7, um, uh, you being the people of Israel had brought uncircumcised foreigners into my sanctuary uh, that did not have a heart for God. From now on, people must be circumcised and they must surrender themselves to the Lord. And it goes on to talk about the men of Levi, the priests. These are the priests and the temple workers who abandon me must bear their consequences. Verse 10. Um, they had encouraged people to worship idols and they had not led properly. They can be guards and uh, maintenance workers, but they can't be priests. It, however, in this Levitical line, in this priestly line, there was a family of Zadok who continued to be faithful, they can stand in my presence. It says, um, when uh, entering the gateway, the entry house, I call it in the picture there, uh, to the inner court, they must only wear linen cloth. Nothing can make them sweat or perspire, it talks about. And when going to the outer court, they must change their clothes as not to endanger others by the holiness of of their clothes. That's how holy our God is. If you're in the presence of God, everything about you is transformed. And that talks about that in 19. And then it goes on to say uh, how they choose their wives and how they teach people between what is holy and what is common. They can serve as judges. They must obey the Sabbath and the festival times and such as that. Um, they must not be in the presence of dead people. Unless it's their father, their mother, their child, or their unmarried sister. And even then, they have to go through a seven-day ceremonial cleansing period before they can come in the presence of God. Um, they can't own any property uh, because I alone am their special possession, it says. And it ends talking about their food and their dining, uh, the way they eat, and the way people bring them sacrifices and 
essentially the tithes that provide for food for the priest. Chapter 45, Ezekiel 45, starts out talking about the dividing of land and setting aside a section for the Lord as his holy portion. This is where the temple was to be. The area surrounding that would be the areas where the worker lives, and then beyond that would be the prince's land. And in verses 9 through 12, it gives the instructions to the princes of Israel. And this just says princes, but, the, you know, princes become kings. So it's talking to the leaders of Israel, the government leaders of Israel here, the kings, um, to treat the people fairly. Uh, people will bring their taxes to the prince in the form of wheat, olive oil, sheep, goats, grains, etc. The prince brings the offering to the festivals. And then in the uh, Hebrew lunar calendar... The first day of the first year um, was called to be, they were called in verse 18 to uh, sacrifice a young bull with no defects. And also again on the seventh day, for anyone who has sinned in error or in ignorance. Uh, in this way you will, clear, uh, you will cleanse and purify the temple. On the 14th day of that same month of the new year, uh, celebrate the Passover. And that goes on for seven days. And all the breads made without yeast, that type of thing. On Passover, a young bull was sacrificed for the sin of the prince and the people. So this prince they're talking about here is not Jesus, is not the Messiah, because he wouldn't need the sacrifice for sin. The same happens in the autumn. In the festival of shelters, the prince provides the sacrifice. A lot crammed in here. you got to get into God's word. This is just a supplement, not a substitute for your time as a daily Bible reader, getting God's word with me. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Have a great day.